so we can start the network. The big hand is on the two, and the little hand is on, no. The big hand is on the 12, and the little hand is on the two. And I can now tell time analog again. And it's time to start the meeting. This is OpenPGP. If you meant to be in HTTP BIS, it's next door. If you wanted to be somewhere else, check the agenda. So, um, so uh, first off, just to note that Barry has stepped up as a co-chair, which is much appreciated. So, um, uh, Christopher Ludenstolp has uh, stepped down as co-chair. So, just making sure that everybody knows that. Uh, this is the note well. If you um, haven't been to an ITF meeting before, you should uh, probably read this note well and note it well. Uh, this covers um, the intellectual property stuff that comes up in the meeting, among others. Um, so uh, the, we have an hour and a half today. Uh, the basic agenda is to um, just make sure everyone knows what the, uh, that we're on the same page. Um, ensure that uh, we're going to basically talk a little bit about the registry issues because we have a couple of requests for code points on registries. Um, and then Werner is going to present a, a series of uh, specific changes for 4880 BIS. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the PGP MIME S MIME stuff that came up on the mailing list and um, any other business. Um, blue sheets are blue, blue sheet singular should be going around. If you haven't gotten it yet, um, raise your hand. Anybody have anything else that they want to raise for the agenda? I don't see anything. So, all right. Um, so just a brief overview of the documents to make sure that people uh, are aware of them. So we have formally ad adopted uh, what was Werner's original draft and is now a working group draft for RFC 4880 BIS. Um, so this basically is the original RFC 4880 with some uh, integration of the elliptic curve stuff. Um, and a few minor changes are underway. So we're gonna do more than minor changes here going out to, to fulfill the charter. Um, discussion happens on the mailing list um, and the, the draft is currently written. Um, yeah, you can bring it up front, thanks. Uh, draft is currently written in Markdown. Uh, if you wanna actually propose changes, we uh, welcome concrete proposals. Uh, you might find it easiest to do a diff from the Markdown uh, or you can just send the words to the mailing list um, please use, uh, the, there's a Git repo here uh, that you can use if you want to pull the draft. Um, but discussion should happen on the mailing list. Um, so you're welcome to do a pull request, but make sure then that you make a copy of that to the mailing list so that we can have the discussion all in one place and archived by the ITF. Um, so just making sure that everybody's aware of, of, of those sort of guidelines for contribution. So, um, um, so one of the issues that we've dealt with on the mailing list um, recently is that we're getting, we're going to get some requests for code points uh, that may not be the things that we think are mandatory to implement or um, um, uh, or even necessarily advisable. Um, and we have a very limited uh, code point space because of the way the registries have been designed in RFC 4880. Um, so I wanted to raise these, uh, raise this point and just uh, put forward a concrete proposal. Uh, we don't have a specific diff for this at the moment, but just a, a concrete proposal for one, one approach that could be used. And I'd like to hear feedback on the proposal. Um, so the registries right now are mostly one octet registries where the high bit is expected to be low. Um, that is, they're basically seven bit registries. Um, and so if we, so one, one approach, uh, the proposed approach is to loosen up our control of the registries in a similar way to the way that TLS is loosening up their control over the registries to allow code point assignment, but not working group endorsement um, so that people can get a, a code point. To do that, we would need a larger registry probably than a seven bit registry. Um, uh, and because all of our existing registries are basically seven bit, we can use a high bit to indicate that actually it's a two octet value in the registry and then we get a, a 14 bit registry instead of a seven bit registry. It's sort of a UTF-8-ish approach. Um, 
but it would give us enough space that we could do a first come first served and not have to argue on the mailing list about um, whether we get code point assignment or not. Um, so the approach that the TLS working group is doing is that the registries basically are first come first served with an expert review to ensure that the documents that, that they point that the proposed assignment is actually legible. Um, but no direct endorsement by the working group unless they want a Y in the working group Y column. Um, and so this way, if someone wants to work on an extension, they can just use, they can pick a code point, document what they're doing and get the code point without us having to have a discussion on the mailing list about it. Um, so uh, is this proposal clear? Do people have questions about what the, what the results of that would be? Phil, you look like you want to say something about it. Yeah, uh, I'm not keen on it. Okay. Uh, the reason that TLS had to go their way. That's Phil Holland Baker. Yeah. So the reason that TLS had to go that way is that they made the mistake of using suites. And that means that they don't have so much flexibility. I would rather have a divide between stuff the IETF cares about and everything else. I would like everything else to be as far away from IETF and IANA as possible. So rather than making, changing the registry in this way, what I would suggest is have one additional code point, which would be, it's in, the algorithm is specified by an OID. And then stick the OID in some part of the packet or whatever that you don't care about. And the reason that you do that is that then, since anybody can get an OID, you know, anybody can have, a, 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 you know, I have an ARC. Komodo has an ARC as well. I mean, like, in fact, I have more than one ARC. Um, that puts the tagging of the crypto completely outside the ITF process and means that people can't come around and say, oh, my algorithm has been blessed by the ITF. And you know, and I know that we can say that we're not implying endorsement, but you know, and I know that Every time we've done that in the past, the people who get the code points then immediately go out and their marketing department say, this is ITF endorsed, that we've got a, a code point. So that's a way that you completely isolate all the vanity crypto from the stuff we care about. And also, if we ever get to the point where we've used up all 126 remaining code points, where we've got a natural expansion thing, and you know what, I don't think people are going to care about how long OIDs are or whatever, or interpreting them by the time that you run out of 126 slots. Okay, so there's a counter proposal there. Um, does is there does anyone else want to speak to the proposal or the counter or or Phil's counter proposal? I'll, I'll strengthen that discussion, please, on Phil's proposal. Okay then. Uh, yep. Stephen Farrell, just as a random participant, I, I'm not convinced that Phil's argument that that would work so well because I mean I think marketing departments can make any claim they want and they will. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, the working group could do it that way. It, 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 I guess it would probably work. Um, the TLS kind of copying the TLS approach seems like a, a better understood thing. Uh, unless you're convinced that, that Phil's argument is correct, no. I'm, I'm personally not. I have a question about Phil's proposal. Do you, uh, so the, these other ones that go into OIDs would not be reviewed at all? It no. Just be, anybody wants to do no, anything? Uh, I'm relaying a comment from Sean Turner. He says, we've done this a bunch of times. IPsec and TLS are two examples. Banner? Uh, Banner. Um, we already use uh, object identifiers for the um, specifying the curves, uh, so uh, anyone is, uh, can put any curve out and then say it is an IETF endorsed curve. So I don't think that argument is really sound. Paul Vargas? So, so yes, we have done this in IPsec, where we can now use an OID to decide what algorithm to use. But that is a, um, a live happening, right? I am talking to a remote server, and I immediately going to decide whether or not I am going to find that algorithm acceptable or not. 
with PGP, it's a little different. If I need to sign something or or encrypt something, and then you know hours later, someone else decides, well, actually, I really don't like that algorithm. Then or years later, <laughs> then then you have a different problem. So I'm not sure if the mapping between TLS and IPsec really maps onto this open PGP problem. Uh, Phil Han Baker again. Well, part of the idea here is that it avoids the need to have yet another registry. And so when you're writing the code, uh, it, you know, because virtually every crypto library already has a mechanism for here's an OID, give me the algorithm that maps to that OID, or I'm using an algorithm, tell me the OID of that algorithm. Uh, if you create another registry, then that's another set layer that I have to put in my code. Now, obviously, if somebody wants this stuff to actually be interoperable, uh, then they're going to have to write a draft as minimum. However, my view is that if somebody wants this to actually interoperate, they had better be using something that is in the mandatory to implement or the very strongly recommended by ITF route, or else it's not going to work anyway. So to be clear, the original proposal did not indicate any creation of any new registries. It indicates that we should have columns in the registry indicating working group approval and mandatory to implement. But, and it increases the size of the registry so that we are able to do first come, first serve without depletion. But no, none of the proposals on the table thus far have indicated the creation of a new registry. Well, yeah, but what it means is that somebody who's coming to the ITF is, with a, an algorithm they're trying to propose is going to have four points of contact that they're trying to get through with different rules or whatever, and I'm trying to reduce that to zero so that we don't need to talk to them. All right. So I'm going to post this proposal to the mailing list um, in hopes that people can we can uh, get people to speak up in favor of one or the other of these proposals um, and maybe try to achieve some sort of consensus there. Um, another comment from Sean. He said, I should have been clearer. The registries are now IETF, IETF consensus. We've had examples of IPsec and TLS that went less strict. We should follow these examples. Okay, so uh, the less strict from TLS is this outline here. This is in the slides. I'm not going to go over it um, in full here, but basically uh, everyone who comes to the IETF without, without needing to get working group approval in this proposal would get sort of first come, first serve, get a, get a code point assigned. Um, and they could do that through the for all others section. Yeah, just just to be clear that what I read here is designated expert review, yeah. not first come, first serve. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So that that would that would ensure that the draft is basically legible and we would expect it we would need to choose the designated expert if we wanted that to happen. Um, so um Anyway, this will go to the mailing list, and um, I hope that people will uh, give feedback on the mailing list and speak up. We can maybe call for some consensus there. Uh, so, Werner, do you want to uh, step up? Yeah, so the pink box there, if you stand in the pink box, then they'll uh, be able to get you on video. Uh, okay, so I have a couple of topics. So, the first topic is. Um, uh, in my play, I suggested that uh, one week or two weeks, two weeks ago, the thing is simply that um, it would be very um, convenient to have an indication in uh, whether the content is, not, is a mind part or it's not a mind part. Uh, um, that makes writing parts much easier because if you, if you notice the mind part, you just put it to a mind part. And the, another advantage of this flag is. Uh, Werner, yeah, Werner, closer to the microphone, please. You can move. Tur the turn the microphone so that you're more comfortable facing where you want to face. There you go. Okay. Uh, the other advantage is that mine already has all, all the uh, features to um, the data so we have some different data packets we already have, uh, file and, and things. But in most cases, you, you can't use it for different things anyway. Um, um, that bind is much more flexible for this and um, 
but it's just an easy extension of the, uh, the data package. Uh, it has been suggested a couple of years ago already. So, okay. so you're still you're still not good on the mic. Get it really close. No, it's on. It's just too far from your mouth. No, now it's not. I take this this way. So let's see. <clears throat> okay, that was the, um, the mind flag. Um, we have it in the issue tracker, and there's a proposal on the mailing list. And well, that's it. And um, okay, the, uh, this other uh, thing is. Um, uh, the, David has suggested um, to put explicit words into the RFC um, to make it clear that uh, part of the metadata, which is in the literal data packet, are, is not are covered by the signature. But we have another topic on this uh, later in a later slide. So, uh, Werner, are you okay if people come to the mic if they have if they have questions? We can we can go through your points. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm not singing about the mic. So. Anyone questions? No? Okay. Uh, the other thing is um, that that's also pretty easy. Um, we have in signature packets uh, in the signature we have the uh, long key ID, so 64-bit key ID, uh, to uh, um, to find the key, uh, the key for verification. Uh, but 64-bit key IDs are in, too short to really find the keys because we can easily create creations on the uh, 64 bits, and that's a bit annoying and actually dangerous if you always get bad signature due to your wrong key. Um, there is a proposal that we uh, put the fingerprint into a new signature subkey, uh, sub packet, and uh, very similar to the to the issuer packet with the 64-bit key ID, and uh, this would fix our problems. There's a proposal there on the mailing list and also on the issue tracker. Um, and I hope that with a uh, new key format or later we can fade out the use of the issuer sub packet, which needs to stay currently in OpenPGP data for backward compatibility. But it's no problem from implementations if, uh, if, the, uh, if a new issuer fingerprint sub packet will be added to the, uh, uh, to the data that just works and implementations can use it or can, um, cannot use it, so whatever. Questions? Okay, fine. <laughs> Our, uh, yeah, we recently talked about uh, a thing which would be nice to have. It's it is another um, encryption sub packet um, in, uh, called Encrypted Two, um, which is used to um, um, put the recipient keys. So if you sign and encrypt, then you can put the um, the recipients of to whom you encrypted into the signature. So uh, after the, uh, the uh, encryption layer has been stripped off, there's still the signature and everyone can see or can check uh, to whom it was originally encrypted. Um, there's no proposal for this yet. It should be easy to, f to do something and uh, I would like that, uh, I would appreciate if someone writes a proposal for this, how to uh, have a sub packet which uh, uh, carries the uh, recipient keys for the encryption layer. Yeah. I have a question yeah, as, as participant. What is the value of having, I know, I see the value of having the recipient email addresses or something. What's the value of having the key that you had used? Um, the value is that, that you can, you can later prove or show that uh, it was, it has been encrypted to this and this and um, um, because in, well, a kind of attack is that you take it, strip off, uh, strip off the encryption, and encrypt it to uh, someone else. To someone else, anyone can do this, um, and just uh, the signature claims something different. So you're you're saying uh, okay, okay. So you're saying if if you have the original encrypted version and the decrypted version, you can re-encrypt to check that nothing has changed. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, kind of, the signature of, should be. Uh, yeah, well, really I, 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 sent, I sent you an assigned and encrypted, encrypted mail. Yeah. And you decrypt it, 
but keep the uh, signature layer yeah. for me and then you send it encrypted to someone to someone else well let's say to the nsa or so or no it's to a newspaper um but then they can detect okay it has originally been encrypted for uh, for you and so it is it was le legitimate that you are sent it forward uh, again i oh. see so i see the value of saying who it was encrypted for but i don't see the value of having the original encryption key once you've decrypted it ah no 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 i i just meant my so that's that's a matter of the proposal for example put okay. out the fingerprint into it and then if okay. you have the fingerprint okay. you can figure out uh Okay. To me, it was encrypted. Yeah, sorry for misunderstanding. So, for this, uh, we would need a proposal. So, I want to ask if there's anyone in the room who would be interested in writing up this proposal. This is a pretty straightforward thing, and it would be great to have a concrete contribution. Anybody interested? I'm not seeing any volunteers. Okay, so this, this probably won't happen unless someone does it. But there are more folks on the mailing list. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't so, the note taker, please note that uh, we need to look on the mailing list for volunteers for this. Okay. S D S S two K our K D F function. Um, it has already been discussed a couple of months ago. So, what we want to have is a code point for argon two i. And another code point for no S two S two K at all. We don't have this right now. Um, this is uh, useful if you already have a, a key with high entropy. So, for example, uh, stored in a database, and you want to send to send this out. So, um, this wouldn't involve all this KDF, the iteration, and the time the time consuming stuff. And for some applications, this uh, is very useful. So, this, um, so the proposal is to have two new core points uh, for these things. And we should deprecate all other S2K modes, which means uh, also the, the uh, iterated and sorted, which is the de facto standard today, um, in favor of Argon2i for the transfer of uh, secret key material. And the last point is keep unprotected keys is somehow related to this. Uh, of course, it should still be possible to have non-encrypted keys. The S2Ks are used to um, are en encrypt keys or protect secret keys and also for the uh, symmetric encrypted integrity packet data yeah. if you just encrypt with a symmetric with a pass press um yes i guess there are questions or comments hi right, stephen farrell uh, so for argon to i um there's some discussion in cfrg about the draft about that and i forget the status of it there, but I hope that what's being done here and what's being done there will be the same. That's the intent, yeah? Uh, yes, so as far as I remember, um, we need to figure out or de define which parameters are to be used then for this, so. Yes, okay, so so just I just wanna check, we're not in danger of kind of implementations here getting ahead of the documentation of the algorithm in, in CF4G. Okay, no. Good, okay, thank you. Hannoberg, I had basically the same question. I want to clarify that. Do we want to wait till CFRG has produced an RFC for Argon 2? Or because as far as I remember, but I don't recall it exactly, there was a paper with attacks on Argon 2i, and there were some debates whether the algorithm should be changed to counter that attack. So it may be that something else ends up as being the standardized Argon 2 than what's out there now. So uh, my impression of what happened there is that is that Argon 2i has actually been modified, but I could also be wrong about this. Is there any CFRG person here who knows more? I can I can ask for clarification in the CFRG uh, meeting later. Uh, like the point would be, do we say this will be delayed until CFRG has finalized something on Argon 2, or or is this to be implemented? pretty soon. I mean, I want to encourage implementations to happen. Um, I guess one thing we could do is we could say we're going to put a code point in place for Argon2 
Yeah, so I mean, I, 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 I don't know if the changes that have been considered in Argon 2i are affecting drop or, or if they're just parameters that you can tweak anyway. Um, so, so I think, yeah, talking to the, the, the C4G folks is a fine thing to do. But yeah, you, you can also sort of say to them, we, we want an Argon 2i or an Argon 2 RFC. You know, please don't sit on this for years. Um, and, you know, it, we don't want you to, you know, if, if, let's say they get to draft 10 or something, you could say, we're going ahead with draft 10. Please don't do none of the undroppable changes anymore. So okay. I mean, if you talk to them, I mean, it should be a solvable problem. OK. So uh, we have a lot of uh, algorithms in OpenPGP. And here's a suggestion on what to deprecate. Um, I think the uh, triple DES is uh, uh, interesting because it's the only must algorithm in uh, OpenPGP currently, um, but that's old. That's nearly 20 years 20 years old that we have it in uh, OpenPGP, and this should be and is in reality it has been replaced by AES. So there are actually, uh, the implementations which do which don't even implement triple DES. So I think it's uh, it's pretty okay to re remove triple triple DES. MD5, it just, it's obvious. Uh, SHA-1, we also need to deprecate this for obvious reason because of the IATF and uh, because we want to use it in a few years still. Um, there's, um, I also suggested to remove uh, SHA-224 because it it doesn't really fit there. Why, why do, do we need four, four algorithms and implement, implement them? So it's um, it doesn't make much sense to have this one. Um, the other is uh, RIPE MD 160. It's not really used. And, um, the other is two fish, which is actually a good cipher later and uh, 128 bit block length. Is, it would be okay, but why should we use two fish? There is no sound reason for this. It's slower than other things. We need a lot of code to, to implement this. And so it's, it doesn't make sense. Um, blowfish, for obvious reason, it's uh, it's too old. It's yeah. Um, we should also deprecate uh, the old symmetric encrypted data packet. This is the data packet without the, the MDC, so without our own uh, modifi uh, modification detection code. Um, this can be deprecated because um, the modification detection code is now in use everywhere. Um, yeah, and, and we should also deprecate all version three keys because they are based on uh, MD MD5 and they have a couple of other problems. And so these are basically the PGP2 keys. Um, yeah, okay, uh, S2K already talked about this. And uh, the last question is whether we should deprecate certain key sizes. For example, um, uh, keys, RSA keys below whatever or above fixed in K or what? So I think that is um, some stuff to, that we can discuss about this. Um, because it's, uh, um, people expect that implementations also work with 16K RSA keys, whether this makes really sense, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And so this is a thing where uh, stuff may break. Uh, it, it might also be useful to think about whether we, um, whether we allow arbitrary length of, of uh, for RSA keys because some implementations can't ha can't handle um, arbitrary length. So um, this is nothing we probably can uh, can discuss right right now here, but this is stuff for the mailing list to discuss this, uh, this point, the last point. Anyone wants, anyone wants to keep one of the old algorithms? No. Huh? Okay. Um, the strategy, uh, a suggestion for the strategy is um, uh, that we have classes of deprecated algorithms and parameter values. So there will be a must not implement, which is definitely MD5. And the other thing is that we need to have uh, some uh, uh, back, uh, compatibility for, um, uh, we need to be able to decrypt all the data. So um, the su suggestion is to use uh, must not produce but may consume data, for example, with triple DES, because there is existing data for it, but it should not produce it. 
Um, and it should or may issue a warning to the user if it is possible or if uh, something all just decrypt, uh, decrypted with an alt algorithm. Uh, and the other thing is uh, that um, the old MDC packet or the SEIPD uh, -E are maybe implemented. Hi, Stephen Farrell. Uh, on the previous slide, um, is there anything else we could get rid of? Uh, <laughs> like, what, what are you leaving behind? I mean, it includes um, like Camellia, is, is that widely used or? It, well, I don't know whether Camellia is widely widely used, but uh, it's only there for political reasons. So that's my idea of it. So it's an okay cipher. It's okay cipher. We have it is a kind. You could view it as a fallback thing, and uh, I I don't really care about this Camellia. So, so, so yeah, but the, I, I guess more generally, I mean, I, maybe when you're when you're when when this is brought to the list, maybe also include the ones that you're you're leaving behind, so that people if yes, they yes, wanted of course. to offer yep, that yep. Could, could have that choice. Yeah. So if we had uh, a clearer view of what deprecation means in terms of the registry, I think it would be useful to say, just to be able to concretely say, sure. here you know, we think th these are the columns that are going that we want to put in the registry, and we think that these are the values for those columns for these for these algorithms, right? So that we have something concrete to say. Because I think that the kind of deprecation we're talking about for triple does here is maybe uh, for MD5 is maybe different from the kind of deprecation we're talking about for um, uh, for triple does, right? So, like the must not produce but may consume. Let me throw it out that the, we sort of have a difference between deprecated and obsolete. So here we're saying MD5 is obsolete, and others are deprecated, which means we don't recommend using them anymore, but they're still around. So maybe your IANA registry proposal needs a slightly different set of columns from TLS because you, you have the historical stuff to deal with. Ready for the next one? Um, okay, here's our, our here two profiles we, um, we came up with. So the first one is uh, called the strong proposal. Um, what to do? Uh, what uh, what are mandatory to implement algorithms? Um, the strong proposal includes uh, AEID cipher mode. It has not yet specified. We don't know which one this will be, but it is. It will be a must then. Uh, Taking this AS two five six and SHA five five twelve. Um, Okay, and the other thing is the new um, ED25519 curve for signatures. Um, we, we, missed some, we, missed some, we missed something. We don't have anything for encryption now, of course. Yeah. So the, the um, 25519, or what's it called, X2519, which is the logical uh, extension for this for, encrypt, for encryption here. Um, this is the one proposal, and the other is the more compatible proposal, um, which also includes AEID, and, uh, but um, the um, lower key sizes for, a, for AES and for SHA, um, but also RSA, RSA, that RSA is the manager to implement algorithm. So these are proposals. Werner, can you clarify if, these are, if the proposal is to have both of these, or if, this, if we need to choose one? Uh, yeah, I think we should choose one. So, because they are mandatory to implement, and um, I don't think it uh, makes much sense to um, require implementations to uh, implement both of them. So, there, there are certain um, reasons why, for example, the SHA uh, 512 um, is a good candidate, even if it is slower on embedded machines, uh, because you, you need to use it for ED25519 anyway. Um, well, yes, that's a strong proposal, but if you have, want to have more compatible with existing implementations, um, you could use the other thing, but it, it doesn't, it will only work with the uh, last three items then, because the uh, AID is not in any current implementation because it's not specified. So. Um, 
So is it just why? So any it, discussion about whether the MTI profile should be forward looking or compatible? Uh, my name is Marco Zhachowski, uh, CSG. Uh, I was wanting to ask if there's uh, any thought being given to the use of uh, quantum safe algorithms for OpenPGP. Uh, algorithms for um, protecting against quantum computing threat. Uh, no, not yet. So we don't have any algorithm. But this is also a, a thing with the code part, with the with the registry that, uh, for exponent, this can be used then, and. Uh, well, later keep kept on use, using them instead of using experimental uh, code points for this. But I okay. think it's too early to put this in the standard. Sure. So, it's Stephen Farrell, so, so the CFRG are also you know, beginning to look at quantum resistant algorithms and so on. So I, I totally agree with your last statement that it would be premature to try and pick any such thing and put it into a standard. Uh, Phil Han Baker. Yeah, we, we don't have a thing yet, but I could easily see us burning 50 or 100 code points while we're trying to uh, get to an algorithm. So we, we better get that registry thing through now or else we're going to regret it. Um, hello, Burke. Um, with the post-quantum thing, um, if we look at the symmetric part of this, if we choose the strong proposal, we basically have that already covered because as soon as you go to a 256-bit security, you have reasonably post-quantum security. So if we want to be forward-looking for post-quantum security, we could say if we choose the strong proposal that's there on the slide, then we're already like halfway done and the, only the asymmetric part then has to be done. Then, like we could say, we can keep the upper three points even for the post quantum future. So, is that that was a statement in support of the strong proposal? Yeah. So, just a kind of a question for information. In what say if the if the working group chooses the strong proposal, what how many people won't implement the compatibility stuff anyway? I mean, do, do we have a sense, or you know, will there? Do we think there will be implementations that would only do the strong uh, MTI stuff and would never do what's on, on RSA and so on? Well, I can only guess that uh, some JavaScript implementations would only use one one of the profiles, but I don't know. So. Right, it seems likely to me that new implementations that that are looking for what they'll receive would would accept older stuff to be compatible, but the issue is what happens when they generate things. They're gonna generate stuff that older clients can't decrypt because they, they're they using newer algorithms. So, yeah. But if we if we say that the mandatory to implement stuff is the compat stuff, then uh, there's no guarantee we can ever move to the new suites because no right. one will have ever done it. Exactly. Not quite a good because of the AID. If we, if we say it is a must, yeah, yeah, and we yeah. have we don't have it yet, so it's not it is not a problem to use the other algorithms too far. So the implementations must be changed anyway. Okay, right. So uh, my personal pretty, opinion would be just to go with whatever people write in code prefer. So I'd be I'd be okay if you, if 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 you guys just decided to just let the the, the kind of coders in this in this game kind of rule this one. Okay. We have a concrete proposal to send to the mailing list. Okay, the, uh, the other thing is the fingerprint. The fingerprint is currently uh, based on the SHA-1 hashes, and um, this needs to be replaced. That is the second point, the transformation, um, what hash algorithm to use or how to use it, how to construct the fingerprint. And the other thing is um, whether to uh, include the creation time of the key into the fingerprint. Um, this has been discussed on the mailing list uh, several times on long threads, whether to whether it's a good idea or whether it's not a good idea. Um, uh, another point is that, well, that's more a kind of a remark that um, we can expect that keys are larger than 64K for post-quantum. And uh, currently we are... Uh, 
for the fingerprint, we hash only a two byte length of the of the key. So this needs to be, this should in any case be extended to uh, to four to four bytes, so that we have something clear and don't need to truncate something. Um, okay, so the proposal here is um, that we don't put the creation time in into it, um, that we use uh, SHA-512, uh, but truncate it to 200 bits. So we had a lot of back and forth and bike shedding on the mailing list about the fingerprint format, um, and it never seemed to reach any sort of conclusion. Uh, so I'm not sure how we move forward in terms of actually going with something, um, except that we know that we want to move past the existing implementation. So um, I don't know, anything that can get us towards uh, a consensus would be great in my book, but I, I'm not sure what the right way to do that is. I mean, what, 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 what happens, Stephen? I'll ask you as the AD. What, what, what would happen if, uh, if there is no like, if there's four competing proposals for fingerprints and none of and no one can agree on them? I mean, I think it's. I think we have decided that we want there to be exactly one format for a fingerprint. Per key version. Per per key version, yeah. I feel Han Baker here. Well, one way that you can resolve this sort of thing is to add more requirements until uh, you construct to, to, to knock out candidates that don't work. Uh, so I, if you if you have three people who are saying, well, I want it to be like this because, well, I just like it that way. And then you have another person who's saying, well, I want it to be like this because I would like the same fingerprint format for SSH and PGP and SMIME and everything else that we want to do then I think that that one should win, because that's my proposal. <laughs> well, except that but, SSH and SMIME already don't have the same fingerprints, so we can't fix those things in the Open PGP Working Group. No, but you can have a format that has a content that, that's as part of the hash, has an identifier that's hashed into the identifier like we do with, uh, and that's my UDF proposal has that in, so that then, different applications can use fingerprints and you're not going to get an ambiguity between them. So I actually have a concrete rationale for my design choices. It's not I prefer blue or I prefer red. It's I think that the minibus should be white with a red cross on it because it's actually an ambulance. So you prefer no idea. No, go ahead. No, so your proposal is that uh, to explicitly hash some more stuff with the with the with the key, but only hash 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 this and not put anything else into the key packet for 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 this. So implicitly we do this. Though the fingerprints created for OpenPGP are different from fingerprints for any any other protocol because the uh, the metadata what we hash are anyway different. Yeah. But you just want to have uh, the string open PGP hashed with it. I, I can't exactly remember the UDF. Uh, uh, okay, what, whatever. So it's just hashed another string. So we already hash a couple of things uh, with the with the key. So, well. I have no problem with this. That's Um, the, the rationale for using SHA-512 uh, uh, is um, that we need it uh, for um, uh, ED25519 anyway, so the, the implementation. And yes, it is slower on embedded machines, and Peter Goodman doesn't like it for this reason. But, well, modern machines is actually faster. So it's uh, for a small implementation, it's probably easier to use SHA-512 uh, and truncate it to a reasonable size. Phil, it's also only about the uh, uh, the wire format from the fingerprint and not about the human representation. Phil, you stuck your thumb up at one of that. Does does that mean you agree with his rationale? Uh, totally agree on having five twelve bit uh, SHA. Um, 
there are a few other things that uh, I've done to make sure that if you ever need to rev the fingerprint, you've got a way of revving that without expanding the, so, so that if you use SHA-3, you can also use those fingerprints uh, as an alternative, so you've got an upgrade pack if you ever choose to need them. As far as I'm concerned, though, if OpenPGP was to say, well, your, use, your fingerprint must be SHA-2, 512, that'd be fine with me. Um, I just like backup algorithms. But I like to have exactly two algorithms for everything. I like to have one that I'm going to use and one that I might have as a backup. I do not like having three. So I think in IETF 95, there was a rough consensus in the room that we wanted there to be exactly one fingerprint per key. So if you have a V5 key, that there should be one fingerprint for it. So that if I give you a fingerprint and you decide to compute the fingerprint, you're guaranteed to end up with the same thing. Yeah. So, so having two fingerprints for a single key seems to violate that decision. Uh, it will be entirely, you know, if you want to have that, absolutely you can do that. Yeah. I, 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 what I've been doing is try, trying to work out a profile that will allow me to use the same fingerprint method to identify roots of trust in different formats and use the same fingerprint format and have, an, have, have it be unambiguous. If OpenPGP wants to say, okay, we're only going to allow the 512, the SHA-2 version, that's fine with me. Um, other people might have a requirement for something else. I'm just trying to future print proof the format so that if it needs to change in the future, I mean, the thing is that at some point, it is possible that SHA-2 may be deprecated, and then you've got a question of how do you distinguish between the old fingerprints and the new? Right now, nothing that I'm doing is using the SHA-3 version because there isn't even uh, code that does SHA-3 for most of the So that would, be a v, that would be a V, that would be a OpenPGP V6. Exactly. We're not, we're not specifying OpenPGP V6 right now. You're not specifying it right now, but you probably need to be and able I, to say that you've got an upgrade path to V6 in the future. Well, if there's a problem with SHA-2, you, you, you also need to generate new keys. Uh, um, so it's not a problem to change the key version then. Well, yeah, but you'd still need to be able to distinguish between the old and the new. I mean, we can, we, we, we can take that offline. I mean, you know, if people want to do the, the versioning issue differently, that's fine. And, and if you have specific text you want to propose on this, that's... That I do have a draft. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. So post that. So, yeah, Phil, Phil has a draft, but I, I'm, I guess what you're looking for more is a pull request, though, right? Text for 4880 this, uh, right. yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I presume Phil, you, you're writing oh, a draft mean, that has your generic a, thing in it, and not oh, the specific okay. piece of text that's needed here. I thought he meant draft text. Yeah, yeah. Or, was that what you meant? Well, I, I, I can give you draft text. The draft is already in Markdown, so you can have draft text. Yeah. Uh, well, I prefer. I would prefer to get it in uh, as a, as a div to the current version. Okay, I can try and work out how to do that. So, um, and, you know, I guess uh, if you're asking the question, uh, DKG, about how to decide, I mean, I guess one way might be to say, you know, just pick a date and say the only options are those that have pull requests or whatever you, you prefer by that date, and then just run a straw poll and see what people prefer. Okay. So, yeah. and, and in the end, there are a couple of uh, RFCs that offer suggestions on how to yeah. reach consensus and uh, make alternative decisions. Uh, yeah, there's actually another uh, Mike comment. Um, so relaying for, uh, Derek, which I think is Derek Atkins, um, he says, uh, I believe that the creation time and expiration time should be included in the fingerprint computation in order to prevent an attacker from taking my public key and creating a new certificate around it and causing confusion. 
Granted, an attacker could copy the two times as well, but then they cannot modify the expiration time and maintain the fingerprint. So uh, as a participant, I will comment on this, that currently the expiration time is not actually included in the fingerprint. There is an expiration time, but that's not the one that anyone uses as far as I can tell. Um, and they can take a given key. If it's someone has a, your secret key, they can reuse it in other places. So I'm not, Derek, uh, I'm not entirely sure that that is a change from the existing situation. And I haven't heard of anyone no, doing we, that kind of attack. We, we, we don't have an expiration time in the, in the key. It's in the uh, self-signature. And it is an old proposal to put it back into uh, the expiration time, back into the uh, key packet, because uh, this was the case in PGP2. Um, but the uh, original, before Derek, the, um, the guy who proposed it, um, meanwhile, has no interest in, in, in this. So while well, we discuss this. Right? So Derek, uh, if you have specific text that you want to provide along with an argument for it, if you could send that to the mailing list, that would be good. Um, but I'm not seeing much discussion on it um, here right now. So moving on. Um, so we have this uh, MDC um, thing, uh, modification detection code, and uh, this is supported by a, a flag in a, in a new in a special feature sub packet, which has only the uh, flag support MDC, um, which is basically a preference that uh, implementations understand MDC and uh, to advise other implementations to use the MDC feature. Um, for our, the forthcoming AID thing, um, we um, uh, would add uh, another flag, support AID, very similar to, MD, to MDC, um, but also for uh, version five keys. So with the new fingerprints, these new keys, um, we would say must not use feature packets because um, they should also use, always use AAID done because these are new keys and uh, for new keys you need, need new implementations and the new implementations uh, can use the uh, um, modern thing, AAID. And then we can rid, get rid of the uh, feature sub packet, which is, um, well, you can do this very same with notation with notations or notations uh, notation sig signature uh, sub packets. Um, so I don't see a reason to have this uh, feature packet creep there. So with version five keys, we could just drop this feature sub packet. So I see no comments on dropping the feature sub packet. So I think that's just a, a pull request away. Oh yeah, so um, authenticated encryption with additional data. Um, there is a proposal with, uh, using AES and in GCM mode. And there's a concrete uh, proposal for this. The other is um, uh, to use OC OCB. Uh, OCB seems to have a problem with patterns for some people. So we don't know. So it's, but we can. We are pretty sure that we can get an exception for this, uh, uh, similar to um, what Rugaway gave for uh, TLS. Um, there is also the option to allow both of them to have a flag which is supported. So um, you have two versions. And the other question is whether it needs to be streamable. So that. Um, or what is called on an online algorithm uh, that it can it can use is streamable. There are also some newer and developments. So Poet A it's set on LMD. So I myself don't know them exactly. So that's um, that's all open for discussion now, <laughs> or, or for a long time. What what to, what to use? So um, my personal preference is of course OC, OCP because it's the fastest. It's the cleanest algorithm. Um, but there seem to be some uh, pattern problems, or I don't know, so whether they're really problems. That's an IATF 
our topic, so what to, what to do with this. Yes. So, uh, I'm not seeing anyone uh, speaking up around uh, the particular any, any of the particular concerns here. Um, so, d is the G is the GCM proposal a, a, like in a pull request form, something that could be merged? Uh, I, I can't remember. I only know that uh, Tankred um, implemented uh, this in uh, Open PGP JS. So. so we have one implementation. Yeah, I read that. I've not I've not really seen that, but it's a somewhere free software thing. Okay. Um, so this seems like maybe one of the biggest outstanding questions that we have. Um, okay, um, and I already, already mentioned this. There's a problem in the little data packet, which is a long-standing problem. Um, we have the file name in the little data packet uh, and the file creation time, but you can't use it because it's not protected by the signature. It's, of course, protected by the encryption layer, but uh, uh, but you can just modify these flags. Also, the, the uh, file tag, whether it's a binary or whether it's uh, well, the proposed new MIME thing or text and uh, a Unicode. Um, think that's, not, that's not a good decision. So um, the idea is um, to have a, uh, to define a new signature class. Our signature class are the things we have a signature class zero, which is binary binary data, signature class one, which is uh, text from the data, which um, does the hashing a little bit different. It's a complicated thing like uh, canonicalization of uh, line endings and white trailing white space removal and the things. And uh, the idea is to uh, define a new signature class, um, which uh, um, just hashes everything in the little data packet. And by this, we would basically very easy uh, get a protection for the file metadata, also for this uh, file tag thing. And uh, we could also protect the packet header, so the length of the literal data, so it would explicitly be uh, protected. Um, that's an idea, so we are looking for a proposal for this. If, if you think this is useful, well, I think if there is information and it is covered by the signature and some of the information is not covered by the signature, that's very hard to explain to people. It's very similar to the uh, one encrypted subject in, in mails or in the armor header that the armor header lines um, which give you some information are, are just not protected. So they are hints, but some people use it for strange things. And, and well, it would be an easy way to protect the, to protect this. So is there anyone interested in um, writing a proposal for this particular change? Um, should add a new signature class. So I, I, will, I will post to the mailing list to ask if anyone wants to do that, but I'm not seeing anyone volunteering right now. I would do an implementation, of course. Okay. Um, um, so one thing that hasn't been brought up here is uh, ED448. Um, this is the end of the slides here. So um, do you want to talk a bit about ED448, what the trade-offs are there? Um, frankly, I've not, look, I've not looked into it in detail. Um, but uh, we also need a new, another hash algorithm for this. I don't know what, what the latest specs for this. I. Uh, definitely, the uh, shaft is not enough for, for this, of course. And um, so this goes hand in hand with a new hash algorithm also. Um, uh, we should definitely assign a code point for this, of course. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, no, we don't need a code point for this because um, for the uh, elliptic curve, uh, curves, um, we, we use an uh, object identifier for this, so that's easy. 
but we would at least need to indicate what OID to use and put the, put it in the draft, right? There uh, need to yes. be a change in the okay. draft. To, to control. Does someone know whether there's already an OID or if, um, for four four eight? There there is a CFRG internet draft for four four eight, but I don't think it's an RFC yet. Okay, so probably we just uh, wait a bit. Um, We, we could, I mean, you can edit the draft to, to refer to an existing internet draft um, with the with the assumption that by the time it's published, we would we would it would need to be done. Um, does anyone here who's been following the CFRG have a sense of whether 448 will be done in? Uh... Yeah. Okay. So these were my topics. Okay. Thanks, Werner. Um, so, um, if no more questions on that. Um, I wanted to just talk briefly about the PGP MIME S MIME discussion that we had on the mailing list. About there was a proposal, I think, about merging them. Uh, I want to explain why I think, as a chair, this is probably not appropriate to do um, in this working group. So, I think there's two things that PGP MIME and S MIME do. Um, there's message formats and there are certificate formats. Uh, if, if we're talking about message formats, that's a separate RFC from 4880. We are chartered specifically with revising 4880. So I'd like to not get into revising 3156. Um, if we're talking about certificate formats, I think it's pretty clear that we're not going to adopt X509 directly within OpenPGP. If somebody wants to propose text, concrete text that allows you to say, derive an X509 certificate from OpenPGP, certificate or vice versa, um, and that text doesn't delay the work of the working group, and it's something that's straightforward to implement, I think that's fine, but I don't think that we should be, uh, I don't want it to distract from the revisions of the of the crypto um, that we're trying to get through. So does that make sense as to why PGP MIME versus SMIME is probably out of scope for the working group at the moment? I'm not seeing any complaints about it, but I just wanted to put that out there to make sure that that's clear. Um, if there are objections or if you want to, I mean, I'm happy to talk more if there are people who are interested in, in discussing other other comments there. Um, um, just to go a quick remark, um, this uh, thing has already been implemented by PGP and uh, years years ago, um, a description of what they use um, has been posted to the uh, mailing list. But we don't have text for that in the, um, in 4880 bis right the description of how they do it is posted but it's not there's no uh no no, no there's nothing in it okay. um i i thought that whole discussion was more about rechartering and not what we were doing at the moment in the moment in any case I'm very reluctant to try to recharter the working group right now, and we've had we've been slower at getting just this one draft done. So, yeah. if we want to talk about rechartering, that's a separate conversation. But I really think that's a distraction yeah. from the work that we are overdue on. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I think that is. Um, um, that's the full scope of the stuff that we had uh, on the table for today. So we're a little bit on the early side. That's good. I just had a question for Verna. Um, I, I see that you incorporated the four verified errata in um, the 4880 BIS document, but there are 15 held for document update errata that don't appear to be addressed in the in 4880 BIS. Have you looked at them? Uh, yes, I looked. I looked at them, but um, <coughs> I remember that only the uh, that most of them were. They're most they're editorial things, but that's that's why we hold them for a revision of the document. Uh, if the, yeah, well, if you look at the errata, they're grouped. The verified ones are grouped first, and then the, the fifteen held for document update are after that. So, 
Well, what it, what you should do is use your judgment on them. Uh, the things that make sense, roll them in. Things that you think need some discussion on the list, uh, ask on the list. Yeah, okay. so I, I think those which are very because Yeah, the verified, great. Okay, thanks. So, uh, do we have any other business? Is there any anything else to raise specifically for OpenPGP interested folks? Um, if not, then I will give you back twenty five minutes of your life that you otherwise would have spent in the working group meeting. Um, so, use that time to write uh, pull requests for RFC forty eight eighty bis, right? Um, so, please uh, do do follow up on the list and. Um, uh, and let's try to get this uh, document turned around. Um, who's got the blue sheet? Who has not signed the blue sheet? Do so, please. I don't know where the blue sheet is. This is this is. We we do have just one. I think we can get all fit on one if we. Ah, great. One comment I would try to make to the secretary is we need to have off buttons on the desk mics. Yeah. I usually ask them. These are Yeah, you're not recharging. <laughs> just, I know you don't want to. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> you don't need to say that. You may say that, but you don't need to. I know. So. I think once you get, once you get done, then, then I'm totally open to it. Uh, yeah, well, once this is like working with our scholars, yeah. then yeah. Then yeah, it's no, I, I don't. I don't. Right now. Just from the energy yeah. in this room, I think we're going to push forward. We should be able to do this quickly. Yeah. On the other hand, if there's more energy for arguing on the mailing list, I think, yeah, I would, I, I, I would be totally supportive of you guys trying to close down city discussions. Um, um, I mean, I think yeah, there's a bunch of these things, but I don't think people really care that much. They're it's just been, arguing. It's, it, that's the, the definition of bike share. Right? Yeah. It's like, the LCB one, I think, it might be. I don't. Nobody else has gone there yet. As far as I so this is where, you know, from some forcing techniques, instead of saying who wants to do this and who wants to do that, you say who has a strong objection to this. You say it tells why. But then you start getting instead of people bringing up their little people, they only say something if they really care. You just put it in the wall back. Well, this thing, we 